We're going to talk about one of the most fascinating principles of color theory, and that is color relativity. What does it mean when something has relativity? Well, to be relative, something is, re con is subject to change dependent upon other variables. Um, so I can talk about that at length, but I think it's easier to illustrate with an example. How many of you have ever been to a hardware store to pick out paint for your walls and taken the paint home and painted it on your walls and found that the color looks very different from what it appeared to be when you were in the store picking it out? That is one example of how color is relative. It's dependent upon the variables such as the lighting conditions in the store versus the lighting conditions in your home. It's dependent upon other variables that we're specifically going to manipulate through this exercise, which have to do with the background colors. So colors themselves can interact with each other and basically change one another to make the color appear to be a different color. So you have to think about color as something that is relative to its background, to lighting conditions, to the materials and mediums that you're using. Uh, another example would be if you look at a photograph on a computer monitor versus a printed copy of that photograph, the colors are going to be slightly different. Um, this is an issue that people face when they, for example, are trying to, you know, um, order something online and pick out the colors for it online, and then they get it in the mail and it doesn't quite have the same color that it appeared to, to have on the on the website that you were viewing it on. So these are all important issues that relate to color relativity, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate colors um, by causing them to interact with one another via a principle called ground subtraction. So for this exercise, we're going to do uh, two parts. In one part, we're going to make one color look like two different colors by placing it onto different backgrounds. And that's what we've done over here. I have this kind of yellowish-orange color, and I've placed the yellowish-orange color onto two different backgrounds. So the center rectangle here is the exact same color. However, because of the different background colors, it looks like a slightly different color on each of those different backgrounds. So on the left hand side, it kind of appears to be more of a yellow, and on the right hand side, it kind of appears to be more of an orange color. However, I can show you, just to double check to show you, that if I click and drag this square over, it is in fact the same color as the color on the right hand side. and if I can click and drag these over to show you as well, although I can't because it has a stroke around it. Let me get rid of that. That color is the same as that color. So the color is the same color, however it looks like a different color because of the way the background colors are affecting it. Now, background colors affect the foreground color in a very specific way, um, basically relative to something called ground subtraction. So what you can do is think about how ground subtraction manipulates the three variables or properties of color, which are hue, value, and saturation. So let's select a color and put it on two different backgrounds. And I'm just using the uh, Illustrator template for this particular assignment. If you want to draw your own shapes, you can, but you want to probably keep the format very similar to this and make sure you label everything correctly. So I'm first going to select a color for my uh, center color. and uh, for this kind of exercise, it is uh, much easier to uh, manipulate the colors if you choose a color that is kind of a in-between colors. So instead of, for example, choosing um, a pure blue that's right smack dab in the middle of the color wheel here, it would be better to maybe choose a blue that maybe has a little bit of red in it that has some somewhat of a violet purple shift to it, or you could choose a blue that has somewhat more of a cyan um, quality to it. I'm going to go ahead and choose a violet blue for my color here, and I'm going to put it into the center swatches as well, so that I have the same color throughout. And now I'm going to show you how you can manipulate the uh, background colors to make this color look different depending on different situations. Um, so first of all, let's select this background color and see uh, what is going to be good for changing um, the foreground color. So now this is the color that we have, uh, the color that we have selected for the foreground color is kind of a bluish violet, um, kind of in this range. And um, of course we want to be able to 
push it um, in opposite directions. So on the, we can only kind of manipulate a color to shift it to appear to be a color that is analogous to it because um, obviously you can't make a green look like a red because they're on opposite ends of the color wheel. So you have to be able to shift it in increments that make sense. So for example, we can try to shift this um, purplish blue color to try to make it look um, more blue and less purple by putting it onto a more purpley uh, magenta kind of background. So the idea behind ground subtraction is that the, f the background will subtract its properties from the foreground color. So what's happening here is that the background is subtracting the warm um, kind of reddish violet properties from the foreground color to push it more towards the blue end of the spectrum. So to make the color appear to be different on the other side, we're going to push it in the opposite direction. So now we're going to put it onto a, um, a background that is more blue in the hopes of trying to make the foreground color look less blue and more purpley. So I think we've probably been mildly successful here in doing that just in taking a wild guess as to what background colors to choose. So notice now that this color we know this color is the same color, however, it has a slightly different, it's actually got a hue shift in it. Um, this color looks to be more purple, and this color on the left looks to be more blue. And the reason for that is that the background here is subtracting out the reddish warm violet qualities to make it look blue, and the background on the right is subtracting out the cool bluish qualities to make it look more red violet. So we're shifting it from a red violet to a blue violet um, by putting it onto a violet and a blue background respectively. And that is how ground subtraction operates on the property of hue. Now you can also adjust the properties of value and saturation. So for example, I could try to make this color look lighter and this color look darker by adjusting the backgrounds to make one background lighter and one background dar darker. So for example, I will try to make this color look lighter by darkening the value of the blue on, the, on this background color. And I'm going to try to make this uh, color look lighter by, uh, or darker rather, by lightening the background color on the left. So we've shifted it even more, and now we are effectively having uh, this color appear to be different based on not only its hue, but also its value. So a light background will make a color look darker. A dark background will make a co color look lighter. And then the third and final property is saturation. And you can shift that as well because a muted, less saturated background will make a foreground color look more saturated and intense. And an intensely saturated um, color, uh, background color will make the foreground color look more muted. So we could additionally manipulate those variables as well by adjusting the saturation of our backgrounds. Um, so I'm going to try to make this color look um, in the foreground look less saturated by making the background color more saturated. And I'm going to try to make the, the foreground color over here look more saturated by making the background less saturated. So you can play around with the variables of the colors, the hue, value, and the saturation to work towards um, making the colors appear to be two different colors um, based on the principle of ground subtraction.